Hey YouTube, how's it going? Welcome back into Oh Hey Sports, and today we are going to be talking about my top 10 QBs for the 2022-2023 season. I'm really curious to see what you all think about them. I am really excited to uh, see what everyone thinks. Um, I did release something like this over on my TikTok, but I felt like it would be a lot more fun to kind of go through them a little bit more in depth and see what you all think about it. I'm really excited to see what you all think. So if you would like to join me, please do. Uh, if you like the video, like it, if you dislike it, dislike it, but let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into it. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, hit that bell. YouTube likes it when people like things and comment things. So uh, please feel free to do so. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over here. I'm gonna go ahead and Put my display screen up on the second level, and I'm going to lower myself down. Oh, nope, nope. I want to lower myself down. There we go. Now we're in business. Lower this up. Yeah, dang right. I made a PowerPoint for this thing. All right. So webcam. I'm going to go ahead and lower myself down a little more. There. Where I want to sure put myself. That'll be fine. So. Yep. So here we go. My top ten NFL QBs for the 2022-2023 season and. Some honorable mentions. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put myself down here now because I don't think I'll be getting in the way. Yeah, look at that. Even nice, like, little transitions. Yeah, I worked hard on this. All right, here we go. So, who are my first honorable mentions? First honorable mention, I got Kirk Cousins. So, um, I don't think – I've seen some – things or some people post him as a top 10 QB. He's not quite there yet. I do anticipate him to have a phenomenal 2022-2023 season. Um I I I, I he, they just have so many weapons and I just I can't see him having a bad year. They have a great offensive line. Um other than the Packers, that division is not very good. They have the easiest schedule as I've mentioned on previous streams that I've probably ever seen. They are going to have a phenomenal year and Kirk Cousins is going to look Way better than he probably is, but ultimately I have him in my honorable mentions for many of those reasons. Kyler Murray is my next one. Kyler Murray is at his best probably a top 10 QB. I would make the argument if this was a list of fantasy quarterbacks, he'd be top five. Easy. Um, I think he is going to take a little bit of a stumble back this year, and I think one of the reasons for that is, like, is again, the lack of um, DeAndre Hopkins. Not having that sort of weapon is going to be detrimental to your overall performance. And I just think that, unfortunately, he's not going to get the kind of production that he'll need in order to, to really kind of break into that top 10. Although I think he will be really, really good. And I do think he'll have a great fantasy year, uh, predominantly because of his rushing ability. But ultimately, for now, I got him in my honorable mention category. Next up, Dak Prescott. Now, I'm not a huge Dak hater. There's a lot of people who either they – people either love Dak or they hate Dak. I am very much kind of on the fence. I think he's fine. I like him. Um, but ultimately, that's kind of just my view on him. Dak's fine. Dak's a good quarterback. But I, ultimately, I just don't think he has enough around him that he's going to have a top 10 year this year. I really, really just don't think so. So the other one I kind of wanted to throw out here, I didn't put him on the list, is Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan is going to have a great year. He arguably has the best offensive line he's ever had at, um, in Indianapolis, way better than he's ever had at in Atlanta. He's also got Jonathan Taylor to at, at, at his running back, and then he's got, oh my gosh, I can't remember his name right now, uh, wide receiver at Indy. Um, can't think of who that is. Who is that? Well, hey, if you don't know something, you take a moment and you research it. We are looking for um, Colts depth chart. Who is his number? Who is going to be his number one receiving target? Matt Ryan. It is going to be. Is it Alec Pierce? Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman Jr. Yeah, so he's going to have a great year. But ultimately, like, I think age is just really going to catch up to to Matt Ryan. And so, like, again, I think he'll be good this year. He'll be top 15. He'll be one of the better quarterbacks in terms of, like, he'll be top half. But I don't think he'll be in the top 10. All right. So let's get into who my top 10 are. And if you have any 
outrages or if you have any thoughts in the comments, please feel free to uh, go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll uh, we'll talk about it. Number 10, to no surprise, you know, I mean, admit I am a Raiders fan, but I got Derek Carr. Derek Carr has a, so many weapons to work with this year. He's got a decent offensive line. Um, Josh Jacobs as a running back, I think he's going to have a phenomenal year. I think in fantasy, if you can get Josh Jacobs later in the draft as a running back, you may have a steal on your hands. He may be the steal of the season. But, you know, a, a wide receiver, of course you have. You have Adams. Uh, Winthrow is going to be awesome. If, if Waller is healthy, that is just an unbelievable offensive unit. No. Hang on a sec. My dog needs my dog needs help. He's got his toy under the door over here. What, you want to come in? Okay, you can come in. You can come hang out for the stream. Sure. Here, you want to you want to show off? Yeah, there you are. Yeah, this is Frankie. This is Frankie. Yep. Dog stream. Official dog stream. Yeah, so Frankie here also thinks Derek Carr is going to be a top 10 quarterback. It's not right. Derek Carr, top 10 QB. Yeah, blah, blah, boy. Okay, all right. There you go. All right. There you go. All right. He's just going to go. He'll just go lay in his bed over there. And uh, yeah, there we go. I'll try to lean back a little bit so you can get a little bit of a. Well, if I go this way, I'll go a little bit this way. Tilt the camera down just a hair. We'll have a little bit of a. Frankie Cam right there. And then I'll just move his bed a little over here a little bit more. There you go. There you go. There we go. Dog stream. All right. Um, and the other big thing about Derek Carr and the other reason I have him in the top 10 is he is one of the most clutch quarterbacks in the league, if not the most clutch quarterback in the league. Um, Derek Carr has this magical ability to – just find a way to come back in the fourth quarter. And I believe he has the highest percentage of fourth quarter comebacks or the highest amount of fourth quarter comebacks in the league right now. I, I just, I can't find a legitimate reason to keep Derek Carr out of my top 10. I have a lot, I've seen a lot of people on TikTok and YouTube have him just outside of his top 10, but I, 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 I can't see it. I don't know how people do not include Derek Carr as a top 10 QB. He is 100% top 10. Number nine, Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson is absolutely going to be a top 10 QB this year. Uh, he is, when healthy, I, I can even make an argument of being a top five or six quarterback. Just his ability to extend plays, to run the ball, he is just so incredibly difficult to match up against. To the point that you have defenses who have a spotter who have to watch him every single play. And oftentimes, like it's a linebacker, or they have to like they have to sacrifice like a safety to bring them down as like almost like a second spotter to prefer per, to prepare for Lamar Jackson. He is, when healthy, just one of the biggest offensive threats in the NFL, and an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal fantasy player. Again, if healthy, I had considered putting him higher, but again, I, I think that health concern is real and I just have a hard time justifying him putting him higher than ninth Joe Burrow at number eight I have Joe Burrow and he just after the run he had last year I I don't know how we can keep him out of the top 10 especially his performances in the playoffs he's just he has kind of like Derek Carr he just kind of has that that clutch gene and I I just I don't see a reason why he's not just going to bounce back. I know, or you know, and kind of repeat similar to what he did this last year. I don't think he'll have like necessarily. I don't think Cincinnati is like a Super Bowl contending team necessarily. But I really don't believe in the. Is it the Manning curse? Not the Manning curse because he's not. He wasn't on the cover of the new of the new NFL or the new Madden game, but. The, the curse where a player, if they once they get to a Super Bowl, or quarterback once they get to a Super Bowl, the fall, and then the following year they just fall off and don't make the playoffs, I do not think that is going to be the case. I absolutely have Cincinnati. I believe I have them winning that division. Uh, and a big part of that is going to be because of Joe Burrow and his ability to keep his teams in games. Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is, to me, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, he is the closest thing to Peyton Manning that I believe the NFL has seen since Peyton Manning. He has all the tools. He has an absolute rocket of an arm. His ability to... The one thing I'll say he even has over Peyton Manning is 
is his ability to extend plays. He he isn't quite as just robotic or tin man as like Peyton Manning used to be. Um, and Justin Herbert is still well on his way in terms of like kind of figuring out NFL defenses and whatnot. And, you know, one of the big things about Peyton Manning that in addition to having all the physical tools at his disposal, Justin Herbert absolutely has the physical talent, but I think in a couple of years, he'll have that mental side of it as well. Justin Herbert is a wicked smart kid. He went to, I mean, he's a fellow Oregonian, so I do naturally have a little bit of a bias towards him. I love Justin Herbert. He went, he lived in Eugene, grew up in Eugene, went to U of O, University of Oregon. Um, but like when he was at U of O, like the guy was like a biology, he was like a 4.0 biology major. The guy has it all up here. I think it's just a matter of like giving it time to translate that stuff onto the field to the point where he basically knows what the defense is going to do before the defense is able to do it. And in, in, in the same way Peyton Manning was able to, I think Justin Herbert will be the second coming of Peyton Manning. Um, this is only his second or third year. Oh gosh. Cause it was it last year was his first full year. This will be his third season in the NFL. I think this will be a breakout season for him, and I could ha definitely see him next season being a top five quarterback. Russell Wilson. There's a huge argument people can make about having Russell Wilson as a top five quarterback in the league. I absolutely can see that. I can I totally see where people are coming from. He has all the skills of being a top five quarterback. And this is going to be pretty nice, easy, and simple for me. The big reason I have him just outside of the top five right now is new offense, new city, new team. Uh, going to Denver and playing in that elevation, especially during your first year, I, I, I think Russell Wilson will have a great season this year. I really think he will, but I think he is going to have maybe not as good of a season as he wants to have or as I think some commentators and other folks out there in the internet sphere thinks he is going to have. He'll have a great year in terms of just NFL standards. It's not going to live up to the standard that I think Russell Wilson expects for himself. He will be good, though. He will absolutely be good. Number five, Matt Stafford. Matt, reigning Super Bowl champ, um, I think there was definitely an argument that he could have been Super Bowl MVP. Uh, I think Aaron Donald or Cooper Cup, who did win Super Bowl MVP, are very much worthy of that as well. But I, I have seen some folks have Matt Stafford outside of their top 10, and that is just so egregious to me. How can you keep the Super Bowl winning quarterback out of the top 10? Matt Stafford is... If he were to retire now, would he be a Hall of Famer? Close. I don't think he's quite there yet, but I could definitely see an argument for him. If he just decided to retire right now, him making it into the Hall of Fame someday, I think there's definitely an argument to be had about Matt Stafford being there now. Um, I, I, I want to see him do it one more I want to see if he can do it one more time. He's absolutely a Hall of Famer, uh, but I think I, the, he's going to have a phenomenal year this year. He is going to be he's going to lead the NFC West in passing. I think easily. And granted, he doesn't exactly have the best competition when it comes to beating out the other quarterbacks in passing. You have Trey Lance, who is going to be his first time as a starter. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about him later. Um, Kyler Murray, who definitely has the ability, but I think he's got, he's again one of those guys that can kind of do things with both his legs and his feet. And I think without Debo, or not Debo, I'm sorry, without um, Hop, Hopkins, he's going to be able to have those passing, you know, his ability to pass the ball is going to be limited because of the tools around him. And then you have either Geno Smith or, or Locke up in um, Seattle. And yeah, so Matt Stafford's going to absolutely just demolish this division in terms of quarterbacks. Um, but he's also going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL this year. I think he's going to have a phenomenal season. Matt Stafford, number five. Now, these top four are going to be kind of a lot of your typical who's who. Number four, I got Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is absolutely going to be a top 10 quarterback this year. Um, he'll be a top five quarterback nonetheless. Uh, Aaron Rodgers recently um, had a – what was the thing he had recently? He just went and saw a shaman or something like that and uh, – he did something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like he has a very different outlook on life now. I'm very curious to see if this has any if any effect on his play this year or his like leadership ability. Because uh, there's been a lot of people who have mentioned that he is kind of prickly in the locker room. Maybe not the easiest guy in the world to get along with. But 
he's one of the most gifted throwers of a football I have ever seen. I have never seen a guy throw a ball with such ease as Aaron Rodgers has. And even though Aaron Rodgers is 38 years old, there's not a lot of people in this league that are older than I am and make me feel younger. And Aaron Rodgers is is one of them. He is going to have a great year this year with or without Adams. Uh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, number four. Number three, the GOAT himself, Tom Brady. I know he's going to be 40. He just turned 45 a few days ago. Tom Brady is just going to be a perpetually top five quarterback as long as he wants to play. He's going to be a top five quarterback in my book until he is literally not. Uh, I think he's got the Tampa Bay. I think he's got, I think he's got the Tampa Bay. He's got, Tampa Bay is going to be a great team this year and in a fairly winnable division, if a very winnable division. And Tom Brady's, if you want to see a guy who is just a film junkie, who works, who will outwork anybody on any given Sunday, regardless of age. And the other big thing I think that doesn't get talked a lot about when it comes to Tom Brady, his mechanics. So one of the things, like, just look at this picture here as an example. One of the things they always teach quarterbacks is you want to have a high release point, especially if you are like myself and you are short. Not that Tom Brady is short, but again, having that high release point is where you're kind of pulling down on the football. Uh, it just it it creates a more accurate pass. It it prevents you from from the ball kind of floating above your receiver and potentially landing into the arms of a of a DB. Um, and if again, uh, it helps you prevent smacking the back of an offensive lineman's helmet. That's I don't know, that's just what I did. Uh, but nonetheless, like Tom Brady's just going to outwork everyone, and until he is not a top five quarterback. He's a top five quarterback. Number two, and I think we can kind of see where this is going. I have Josh Allen. I have the Buffalo Bills, my Buffalo Bills. Uh, again, they're one of the three teams I have always rooted for. Seahawks, Raiders, and Bills. Um, the Bills are going to be, in my opinion, a Super Bowl contending team, if not going to be the team that is going to break the curse and finally win the the Super Bowl. And I think Josh Allen is going to be the big reason for it. I have Josh Allen as a potential MVP candidate this year. He's just going to be, he's just going to be lights out. His biggest competition in that conference, I mean, like Miami will be okay this upcoming year. I think they'll be decent. Um, I, it really depends on how Tua does, especially with his relationship with, um, um, why am I spacing it? Taysom Hill. Um, and then you have the Patriots. They're always going to be at least pretty good with Bill Belichick at the helm there. And then, of course, you have like the Jets. They're the Jets. Josh Allen is going to have a phenomenal year. He will potentially be your league MVP. But at number one, I think we all saw it coming, Patrick Mahomes. He is, without a doubt, in my opinion, one of the most gifted quarterbacks I have ever seen. Full stop top of the line you could have an all-time draft of quarterbacks and it wouldn't surprise me if Patrick Mahomes fell into that category at some point um I, not maybe not the number one overall pick all time but he is definitely has the potential to be like just an absolute all-time great as long as he is on your team your team always has a shot at not making the playoffs if if not winning your entire conference um, or if not winning the Super Bowl, you potentially could win your entire conference just for having Patrick Mahomes at the helm. He is one of those few players that could take a team, kind of like Tom Brady did with the Bucks. And don't get me wrong, Kansas City's good, but you could drop Patrick Mahomes onto the Jets, as an example, and they would be a borderline playoff team with all the things they have around them, and Patrick Mahomes would be the catalyst behind that. Patrick Mahomes is my number one quarterback. I think he is going to be have a phenomenal year this upcoming year. Despite losing Taysom Hill, uh, I just have Patrick Mahomes as a, my overall number one quarterback in the NFL for the 2022-2023 season. And, of course, you know, I did just get done saying, are you talking with who? Who am I talking with? I'm just talking. I'm talking to the people. But nonetheless, um, yeah, Patrick Mahomes, my number one overall quarterback in the NFL. I'm I'm stoked about him. I'm stoked to see this upcoming season. We have a game coming up later today. I know it's preseason, but honestly, I'm I'm stoked about it. You have the Raiders. You have um, you have the Raiders in Jacksonville. It may not be the most exciting game in the world, but I am excited about it. 
All right. And, yeah, those are my thoughts. So just to kind of recap, my top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL this upcoming year, uh, we got uh, Derek Carr, Lamar Jackson. Uh, number eight was – how do I go back? Here. Let me just back out of this and we can just look at it all together. Yeah, Joe Burrow. Yeah, Derek Carr. Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, Matt Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Josh Allen, and of course, Patrick Mahomes. But that's what I got for you. What do you think of my top 10 NFL picks? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, like as I said before, if you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. Uh, let you know when a new video comes out. Um, feel free to, again, like and comment. It helps boost the algorithm. Apparently, YouTube likes that. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much again for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.